This episode is brought to you by The Java Can, a ruggedized mobile coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's 10%. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. Live life charged. More people listen to podcasts than go to the movies on the weekends. So why doesn't your business have its own podcast? I'll tell you why. Because you don't know where to even start in the process. You don't want it to sound like you're recording in your mom's basement. And you simply don't have time to learn how to record, edit, and master the sound. Let ClearCommo take the stress out of podcasting and help you produce a high-quality podcast to share your company's message with its customers and future customers. If you're not in charge of your message, someone else is. So take charge today. Let us help you make a clear message with ClearCommo. Go to www.clearcommo.com and start your company's podcast today. Folks, the latest book on my must-read list is one that honestly might save your life. It's 365 Days of Survival by the folks at Captive Audience. This book has 365 days of tips and lessons of survival from people in the special operations world, law enforcement, and survivors. These tips span from wilderness to urban survival, natural disasters, and crisis planning. Be a force multiplier. 365 Days of Survival is available now on our website, theaarpodcast.com. Fortune favors the prepared folks, so don't wait to wish you knew what to do, know what to do with 365 Days of Survival. Go to theaarpodcast.com, scroll down, and order your copy of 365 Days of Survival today. And welcome to the show. I'm feeling a lot better since episode 61 with Michael Broderick. Look, I uh, I got the plague, Ebola. I have no idea what it was. But I do know I got it at my last drill. I walked into that building and I knew right away when that hot air hit me in the face, that, that hot Cambodian jungle type of air that has no business being in Pennsylvania in the middle of winter, I knew right away, like this, this is going to get me sick. And it did. But here I am. Huge thanks to my wife, Carrie, uh, for filling in. Not only did she do a great job, but the response from from mill spouses has been extraordinary. So you can probably expect to hear from her very soon. So this is something of a special episode. Every year, we are grateful to be invited by Capital Post and Bunker Labs DC to record at their annual muster event. Folks, Networking is crucial to success, not just your success, but you'll be surprised at how you can help foster growth in other businesses. The only way to do that is to get involved with legitimate and proven networking groups like Bunker Labs. I've talked about them before on the show. They are among my favorite organizations for veterans. Bunker Labs is a 501c3 nonprofit network of veteran entrepreneurs dedicated to helping new veteran entrepreneurs start their own businesses, networks, tools, and resources. That's what Bunker Labs brings to the fight. Go check them out online at bunkerlabs.org. Now, this episode is a very quick snapshot of the different businesses that were present at this event. The muster had a pitch competition, a panel discussion, business showcases, and so much more. Folks, there is a Bunker Labs muster headed to a city near you. Get involved and get out there. Check it out. Bunker Labs musters across the country. And this was the first one. This was the inaugural uh, 2019 Bunker Labs DC muster. I don't know if inaugural is the right word because they've had it in the past. Is inaugural an annual thing? Can we, can we, it was the first one of the year. So we're going to go with that. Um, So here are a couple of highlights 
from the event. Now, there were a lot more businesses than what we could fit on the show. Uh, so go check it out. I'm sure this one come to your uh, to a major city near you. Bunker Labs. Here it is. Some highlights from Bunker Labs' DC Muster 2019. Uh, my name is Brendan McElroy. I'm a former Marine, and I'm the founder and principal of Franklin Consulting. So, Brendan, what is Franklin Consulting? Uh, Franklin Consulting is uh, is a startup idea that I had um, when I left the Marine Corps. I spent about 10 years in management consulting, and I realized that there are a lot of really smart people in the area um, helping organizations with uh, really high level strategies and things that leaders really need to get ahead in three to five years. Uh, and then there are a lot of really great, um, HR shops out there. Well, um, I started Franklin to be the connection between the strategy and the direction of companies and the tactical HR shops. It, it's something that the Marine Corps taught me how to turn strategy into action. And what I realized through consulting is that, um, there was not a lot of connecting files between the strategy and the implementation. So what does that mean for individuals who are looking for consulting? What kind of consulting do you, do you, do you offer? Is it for financial? Is it for leadership? What, what, what are they looking at? Uh, we do uh, it, what I call talent management strategy. So what is talent management, talent management strategy? Uh, most C-suite leaders in our area have a very clear direction of where they want their companies to go. And um, they, so they turn to their vice presidents, their presidents, and they say, um, here, march in this direction. What I do and what Franklin Consultants do is they, they help the uh, leaders work through their HR shops to posture from three to five year, years from now. So in this area, in the D.C. area where um, I mostly work, the workforce is going to change a lot in the next couple of years. Uh, we're anticipating in, in between now and 2022, about 40% of the workforce is going to be in some kind of temporary employment. Uh, what that means is uh, independent consultants, gig economy, um, or just people who are W-2 employees and, and don't want to stay the same place until retirement. And so while well, most companies are really good at HR being uh, what transactions do we need to accomplish today? And they're really good at strategy where they want to be in five years. Leaders need outside perspective to help to posture their workforces to start to grow and evolve the workforce over a couple of years to, to achieve strategy in the future. You've been with Bunker Labs. You've seen what they've done. You've seen the muster. What are you actually walking away from here today with? To, the main thing I'm walking away today with is every time I go to an event like this, um, I think I, I see business cards getting exchanged and people walk away with pockets full of business cards that just kind of like sit there or, you know, with good intention and they just kind of like sit, sit in the corner. Um, what I try to do at every event is actually follow up with all the people I meet. Even if I meet someone, I think that this person's in a totally dissimilar area uh, to what I'm currently involved with. Uh, when I look at the kind of experiences that I've had after the military, they've been with some of the strangest, oddest connections. It never could have been planned. If I sat when I left the Marine Corps at 26 and planned out the next 10 years, um, it, it would look totally different than this. So I think about that when I make all of these connections and I pass the business cards and I try to actually follow up with it. Uh, rather than stick it in my pocket and forget, because y you never know uh, what relationships are going to flourish and, uh, and what follow-up can come from events like this. And if we want to learn more about Franklin Consulting, where do we go? Uh, you can go to my website at www.franklinconsultingllc.com. Uh, my name is Jordan Wilhelm. I was in the Army for 10 years as an EOD technician. I got out in 2015. Since then, I've been working in government contracting, doing work for the State Department, uh, doing mine removal and clearance, and just recently, uh, in December, started a company with a, a girlfriend of mine. Uh, we're working in sustainability in um, CBRN programming. Uh, my name is Scott Esham. I am uh, uh, 
live with Jordan, my wife here in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, I was in the army for about 10 years. I was an engineer officer for a couple years and then I was a special forces officer for the last several. Um, I left active duty in 2016 and I went to um, uh, finance and did an investment banking, investment management role for several years. Uh, and right now I'm kind of doing um, early stage technology consulting and also doing a bit of work with a large philanthropy on the future of work. Terrific. So tell me about your business. What is it called again? It's called the Critical Mass. The Critical Mass. What is the Critical Mass? Uh, so the Critical Mass is uh, in response to some of the challenges that we've seen in some of the government offices where talent and um, program officers churn quite a bit. We uh, are working to help people maintain the continuity and sustainability of some of the human capital that they've invested in, especially overseas. So uh, a lot of the folks that uh, have a lot of weaponizable knowledge uh, can also be uh, assets for the United States in terms of uh, university professors, those kinds of things. So we're working um, to build conferences and also a database of kind of trusted uh, allies and, and folks that the United States have invested in so that then those can be resources to new and young program officers who are coming in and we can kind of build a career path and trajectory for those folks rather than sending them to a program for a month or so and then uh, you know not engaging with them further so that's Terrific. our that's our shtick Terrific. now tell me about what you're doing here at the muster what are you trying to get out of this event so this honestly, I, although I've already gotten quite a bit out of it, out of the, the, the networking and just kind of seeing the, the veteran uh, family that's, that's investing in entrepreneurs, um, I really just wanted to actually uh, volunteer here as a thank you because the Bunker and, and Capital Post more specifically have been just such great resources for years before I ever considered doing anything entrepreneurial. And so now I actually have a membership uh, as an entrepreneur in the Capital Post. Uh, they've been fantastic just in terms of the nuts and bolts of getting a business started in um, you know, where the learning curve is really steep. We have a lot of technical knowledge, but not much business um, experience. So doing all of that. Um, and then it's also a kind of an annual reunion to see all of the, all of the folks that some are in the same position, some have done amazing things in their trajectory has been incredible for the last few years. So that's, that's why I came. That's so awesome. So how can we learn more about critical mass? Uh, so we do have a website <laughs> uh, www.thecriticalmass.com. Um, and so we are also going to be uh, working on uh, our first event is going to be a conference in April, actually in Baghdad. It's uh, going to be a uh, symposium uh, with a number of academics uh, from the, the Middle East region, uh, as well as first responders, and um, trying to help them figure out how they can take their, their technical expertise, sustain it, improve it, and um, build sustainable training and, and uh, responsive uh, threat response uh, capabilities. So that's going to be our next thing, and we're looking forward to uh, writing up a case study of it. This sounds very exciting. <laughs> very exciting and also a little scary. <laughs> CBRN has always been that thing that made me nervous more than anything. <laughs> when I went to uh, when I went to OIF one, I remember thinking I would so much rather get shot <laughs> than deal with anything chemical or the B or the R or, or the, the N. <laughs> I don't even want to say them. I was like, I'd so much rather just go out like that than like Oh, I'm a mutant <laughs> or things are like melting off. Anyways, I'll spare the listeners the rest of it. If you're interested, make sure you go talk to Critical Mass. They'll scare that pants off of you. It's going to be great. That's going to be great. Thanks again for taking time to uh, talk with me today, guys. Thank you very much. All right. I'm Sarah, and I'm with my co-founder, Kim. We're with Badges United Foundation. And what our mission is, is to enhance the wellness of our first responders, which is law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs. The nature of their job is really stressful, and they're just as likely to develop PTSD as our combat veterans. Unfortunately, their suicide rate over the past three years 
is higher than their line of duty deaths. So what Badges United Foundation does is we host recreational events such as yoga, uh, hiking, rock climbing, biking, all kinds of events uh, every other month in the D.C. area. And what we do is we, we teach them um, wellness tips such as, you know, um, exercising, sleep, Uh, and nutrition, specifically to kind of a first responder around the stresses, around the shift work uh, that they do. And so what they leave with uh, is is the, the social network and the wellness practices that we have, you know, kind of given them. And uh, we also provide individual wellness coaching as well, all at no cost to former, current, past uh, first responders and their significant others. And how did this organization come about? So uh, we're both prior law enforcement. I was a military police officer for nine years and I developed quite a bit of PTSD to the point where I was about to take my own life. And I had several nonprofits out there for me, 30,000 in the veteran space that gave me the time and energy to actually give that inner hurt some energy and positivity. However, I knew I wanted to continue to serve my country and my community for my life. And I was looking out there just seeing what nonprofits were available to first responders. And I noticed there are less than 100 that I could find. So... I really wanted to find something that was event based so we come with we come to them right now and help them with their wellness journey and also build that network cuz no one's really getting that first responder network together and teaching them the essentials of wellness cuz when they're at their academies they they just they have to learn the profession opposed to like looking at their holistic wellness and uh I mean, it keeps them alive, but at the same time, nationwide, we're having a retention problem with law enforcement. The suicide rate is astronomical. So, um, and then I know Sarah has a very personal story too. Yeah. So I, before I joined the military, I was civilian police officer. And um, unfortunately with the nature of the job, I developed PTSD from going on some really tough calls. Uh, I resigned. And at the time I was national guard in the army and I decided to go full time uh, after I resigned from the police department. And, um, you know, I was really kind of lost and it was the only thing that I thought that I could do uh, was go to, you know, the military full time, which kind of aggravated a lot of my PTSD and to the point where I couldn't handle it anymore. And so I medically retired and now I'm focusing on um, helping others so that they don't have to go through that as well. Wow. Kind of being a little bit more proactive. Yeah. Um, and so integrating those wellness tips before, um, you know, first responders really kind of even develop, you know, um, PTS, post-traumatic stress, mm-hmm. or, you know, any kind of maladaptive um, pra- wellness practices. So you guys are the winners of the startup stand-up from last year. So you guys got the check. Um, which is great. We did. And it was it's very big. <laughs> very big check, and it was a large check. I was ridiculous. The, they, the bank banks don't actually take that, do they? The big check. The big company. check bank. You yeah, know, the big check bank. Yeah, we took it there. Place where you buy the big scissors for ribbon cuttings too. Exactly. Right. And so, the big champagne bottles. And the big cha- Oh, I gotta love that for the boats. Bottle. For the boats. <laughs> so, uh, you're here. You're pitching again. Um, what are you? What are you hoping to get out of the mustard today? So we would ideally like to win. Uh, that would be great. However, we're really looking for the networking opportunities. So we're looking for people to offer their venues. So we've met a couple people. They have cycling and wellness practices that they're willing to offer in-kind donations and different things so we can host our activities at a low or free of charge to our first responders because we are a nonprofit. Uh, we're still new in the area, and before we can really get approved for grants and things, we just need those pro bono services right now. And then also uh, a lot of uh, veterans end up being first responders, so inviting them and their significant others to our events. Wow. Well, good luck to both of you. I really hope this works out. Thanks. You got my vote. Yeah, thanks. Don't tell anybody else, though. <laughs> thanks. Might... We're also trying to just raise awareness as far as first responders and 100%. kind of you know where they're at right now. So we're really hoping to improve that. 
Well, ladies, good luck. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'm anxious to see who's walking away with the big check today. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you so much. All Appreciate right. it. Bunker Labs, too. Shout out to Bunker Labs. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Jim Rochella, and uh, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. Uh, was a... Uh, 0341 with uh, 3rd LAR, well, 4th LAR and 3rd LAR we deployed with. Um, and I uh, started a company called Off Duty Blue with uh, a fellow Marine uh, that actually helps public safety organizations streamline the way that they manage their overtime and uh, off duty details. Terrific. Now, you're sitting here with me and you've got the check. <laughs> so you are the winner. Of today's pitch competition, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about Off Duty Blue and what brought you here today. Sure. So yeah, that's that's always a, a big question is, you know, how did how do we get involved with this tiny little niche of, of police work? Um, well, actually, uh, my my co-founder is a uh, detective up in the Syracuse area, Syracuse, New York, and him and I actually were sitting in the living room having a couple of beers watching uh, an NFL football game and a news brief you know popped up during a commercial that had four uh, of his fellow deputies bug shots on TV so I was you know whoa like what's, what's going on with that and uh, it was over a timesheet dispute with the local bus company turns out the bus company wanted the officers to be riding on the buses for security the police officers figured that they should just be in the area in cars to respond to the buses, which honestly makes more sense because if you're on bus A and something happens on bus B, you can't really get off and help, you know? So, so really was honestly a misunderstanding. And, uh, and as, as Mark was explaining that to me, I was kind of like, well, how do you guys keep track of that? How'd that misunderstanding occur? And, uh, he said there really wasn't much of a, uh, system in place to do that. A lot of handshake deals, kind of just the officers had made a deal with with someone who was managing those buses and and that's how it went so there was no paper trail really uh to designate where they should have been and uh so we kind of just thought man there's really should be a better way (laughs) to handle that and as we started looking into the solutions that were available um there was very few if any and they just weren't really you know sufficient so uh we kind of started to just build out this idea more or less to, to address that one specific problem. Uh, but as we did our research, we realized that really this was a nationwide thing. You know, probably 75 to 80 percent of the departments um, nationally have no real uh, digital way of managing that process. So, so that's what Off Duty Blue does. You're walking out of here with $5,000. What are you going to do with five grand? And how is that going to, to boost Off Duty Blue? Uh, yeah, so we we actually just kicked off uh, a kind of a new marketing push this 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 year. Um, so we definitely put a lot of it towards that. You know, kind of just getting um, you know getting getting our name out there. We always go to all the big conferences, uh, which as you may know, conferences can can Those be get very pricey. very expensive. Yeah, they um, do. So, but but we're actually going to try to we're trying to focus a little bit more um, on digital marketing this year. Uh, we do our best right in front talking to, to officers and administrators and showing them the application. Um, but we need to be able to, to generate that interest, you know, from afar as well, just cause it's more scalable. So we're going to really try to put a lot more, uh, time and effort this year into, um, digital marketing and, and getting, you know, getting our information out in front of people and letting them educate themselves, uh, and, and make, you know, make those decisions. So, so aside from, uh, a tremendous check, a contribution to uh, the the further development of Off Duty Blue. Uh, what did you get out of this muster experience? Uh, this this was a really great muster. I've actually been to this is my first one here in D.C. Uh, so uh, I'm based down in Raleigh, so I've gone to a couple uh, a couple musters in Raleigh. Uh, this one's very really cool just because it's kind of all in the same room. Um, so a lot of a lot of good you know networking and mingling and around but um even just you know the the company next to me in the in the startup gallery sells lettuce you know and they but we struck up a really good conversation about 
payment processors and you know marketplaces and stuff for you know so you just kind of you never know who you're going to run into um it at these at the muster but it always seems to be um really good connections so terrific well thank you for taking time to come talk with us and congratulations thank you all right Hey, um, so my name is Brendan Huff. I'm a um, career warrant officer in the U.S. Army. Uh, that's where I started started my career. Obviously, became an NCO, then transitioned into a warrant officer. Spent about 15 years in the special operations community as a counterintelligence aide and supporting SOF. Uh, that was primarily my background uh, growing up in the Army. Uh, numerous deployments overseas uh, within Iraq, Africa, Afghanistan, uh, Europe, Middle East. Uh, then... A couple years ago, I transitioned. I stayed in the reserves, but left active duty. I transitioned in the traditional contracting role, which a lot of us find ourselves in. Then about five years ago, moved specifically into the commercial sector, um, doing traditional commercial work, supporting the government, government contracts, things that we don't inherently normally grow up doing. We see contractors besides it, beside us doing support roles in specific missions, but you never really get involved into writing proposals, uh, submitting to RFPs, th- that type of work, or doing traditional business development or demonstrations of capabilities. Uh, once I did that, once I transitioned there for about four years, uh, I then tr- moved to my next position where I work currently as the head of um, federal business development for Semantic AI, which is a augmented intelligence company, similar to things like Palantir, Endless Notebook, uh, but integrating uh, AI, machine learning, and natural language processing to that one. Uh, it just so happened at the same time I started our own uh, veteran business with one of my partners. Uh, we had worked together for years. He's also an Army veteran, uh, and that really kicked off simultaneous to that. Um, we actually uh, had desires to do our own business. Uh, you know, we, had, we had supported a lot of people building their own businesses, building their own companies, and supporting the government and clients. And we just wanted to take our own flavor from what we had learned in the military and apply that to our customer base as well. So we stood that up one at the same time. Uh, it was unplanned. It just happened to work out timing-wise. And then I was given the great opportunity to manage a federal BD team at the same time and then hire like-minded individuals to really deliver services and software to the, to the government that we thought would be of value. So you're here at the muster event for D.C. You have a history with Capital Post, with Bunker Labs. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so actually uh, this past summer, uh, my partner and I had actually uh, attended uh, startup school for veterans uh, within the Capital Post system. Uh, and we participated in that, that cohort uh, where we actually uh, had won that series, uh, Startup Standup School, uh, for that one. It was a huge learning experience for both of us because for us, it accelerated what we needed to learn in the business world we got lucky at our previous positions within the commercial sector uh, where him and I had both worked numerous jobs, but others didn't. And we got to see them learn that whole aspect of developing your own business, both financially, uh, uh, liability wise, accounting, uh, taking yourself to market, doing the lean startup. So that was huge for us to go through a lot of things uh, that you don't get, you don't get to learn uh, in the military. You don't get to learn in school. You don't have, uh, unless you go to business school, you really don't get exposed to any of that. So we thought uh, Seda and Emily at the, at the Capital Post did a great job uh, with that. And it helped helped ask hard questions that from a business standpoint were huge for us as we uh, initiated our first, first business proposals, uh, did business development, and then uh, per- pitched to people that, that were interested in investing or interested in learning more or just asking hard questions we weren't prepared for. That was, that was huge for us as, as entrepreneurs. So what are you walking away from this muster with? So um, we had heard about uh, Bunker Labs musters uh, previously, uh, even before we attended Startup Standup School. Uh, and it was just a great position for us to both network from small business entrepreneurs, seeing new capabilities, uh, new potential business partners that may have an existing contract vehicle that we could apply with, or it was a new technology that uh, even just earlier today, we, we met someone who said, hey, 
I've never worked on government contracts. I come from being in the military, but I've never done government contracts. Can you help us deliver our new technology toward the government? And we have that unique ability to consider integrating their their small startup as a technical capability for our enterprise software. And so that's a huge thing from this is one of the things that is important that we noticed here, like everything else we've been involved in, which represents our military too, is in, in this undersecretary of the army said it is you don't leave the tribe when you leave the military after serving or after you retire, the tribe actually gets larger for you because it's all about those personal relationships. So for me, that's what was huge about coming to the muster this, this week. Terrific. I'm glad that you're walking out of here with, with value. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule, out of the muster to come talk with me about awesome. this. Awesome. Thank you, Rod. I really appreciate it. Sure. So Joshua Hawley, uh, my military affiliation is uh, enlisted in the Marine Corps from 02 to 06. So uh, 3043 supply guy, the best, most hated MOS in the Marine Corps. Um, and currently the executive vice president at Hunter Killer, which is also a, uh, a veteran-owned company. So our co-founder is a, a Navy uh, service warfare officer. Terrific. So you're here at the DC Muster 2019. What are you walking out of here with? Uh, just, these events are always so exciting, right? Like you walk out just energized, meeting other people who are working on some amazing ideas, um, and just having a community of like-minded people, right? Usually when you're out talking to people and you say, I run this company that does subscription boxes and tells crazy stories, you get a lot of wild looks. But uh, meeting people who are working on some other crazy things and just meeting like-minded folks is a lot of fun. So you are the runner-up for the pitch competition. You're walking out of here with a check a giant check, uh, a comically giant check of $2,500. Tell us a little bit of how about how that money is going to help hunt a killer. I, so I actually have already promised it as a team building activity check. So good job. uh, I think we're taking the team to dinner is what we're going to do with it. Build up some morale, but, uh, it's a big dinner. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've, we have 35 employees now. We, you know, we grew last year from 12 to 35. We, uh, we're really taking off and, uh, and doing some great things. Um, you know, and the, the, um, the lifeblood of the company is our creative team, those writers and graphic designers mm-hmm. that uh, we're able to take their ideas and, and put them into reality and put them in a subscription box and send them to our members. So love to do things that uh, keep their morale up and keep them happy and coming back to work ready to gr- write great stories. That's amazing. What is next for Hunt a Killer? So um, starting March 5th, we have our second original audio drama coming out. It is going to be called Earthbreak, which is also the name of our third uh, line of boxes. So at this, we have Hunt a Killer, which is true crime. We have Empty Faces, which is paranormal. And Earthbreak will be our science fiction box. So that comes out in March. We're very excited about um, getting a, a third genre out in the marketplace. That's amazing. And if we want to learn more about Hunt a Killer, where do we go? Yeah, so if you want to uh, buy a box, uh, huntakiller.com, or you can go to emptyfaces.com. Um, and if you're interested in our podcast, those are at uh, skylarkmedia.com. Terrific. Thanks for uh, joining me on this very quick podcast, and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much, Rob. Appreciate it. Terrific. All right, so those were just a handful of the businesses that were at Bunker Labs DC Muster 2019. That was the first one of the year, folks, and more are going to be held all over the country. So go, go, go to BunkerLabs.org. Find the chapter that's closest to you. Get involved. It is the place to network. It is the place to learn about business. It is the place to share your knowledge and gain some knowledge. Remember, everyone, check out the sponsors for this show, The Java Can, 365 Days of Survival, and Clear Camo Studios. And if you're going to shop, then shop that own businesses or mill spouse businesses, whichever you like. How about both? Tell us what you thought of this show by leaving a comment on any of our social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Better yet, leave a five-star review on iTunes. That would make my day. And I will see you at the next episode.